Hi, I'm Elaine Frey's Farm Family Coach. Welcome to how to get your non-farm siblings to be on board with your farm vision. Behind me here is a Hoosier cabinet that used to live in my dad's farm shop for many years until he gave it to me as a gift with a warm hand many years ago, probably over 40 years ago when I moved to Boisevain. Unfortunately, with the transition of farms, there's a lot of fragmentation and fighting going on over gifts of land and inheritance or lack thereof. And I've got a branch here with me just to remind us that um, what is written about by Carl Pillemier in his book Fault Lines is that when you have fights about farmland inheritance, it's like an entire branch of the family tree gets broken off and is severed forever. And this has to stop, but it's not going to until people in agriculture start looking at what the key issues are around what people want and why they want what they want. So one of the first things I'm going to encourage you is to have a discussion with everyone in the family about their expectations around inheritance and why things are so important to them. And no one else in my family wanted any antiques, so is there never any fighting in my family about old furniture? I was the only one who cared, who wanted it. But what if there is tension? Families' brokenness is, is something where you have to decide to be a reconciler. You have to decide that the tension around not knowing is going to stop, and you're going to adopt a proactive mindset to make things different. So what do the non-farm heirs expect and why? And just over the holidays I heard of a family in um, middle of Saskatchewan, I'll call it, where the young uh, farm children who no longer farmed, who'd left to gone off to other careers in Saskatoon or Regina or wherever, were coming back to the farm to demand very strongly that they get farmland. And this is causing a lot of pain and angst in families because it's an unreasonable and unworkable expectation. Unless you do what Merle Good says and you give land to a non-farm sibling and you have a rental agreement for 15 years and then there's a first right of refusal years later uh, for the farming successor to pay out their siblings. And here's the news flash: Most farm heirs and successors that I know do not want to be in business with their non-farm siblings. So what are you gonna do? Well, you can give warm gifts. You can give um, university educations, which are worth $200,000. You can give vehicles. You can give personal investments. You can give down payments on houses. You can do other things other than take away from the farm assets. But you're thinking, oh, Elaine, this just isn't even. Well, of course it's not. We have multi-million dollar farms now because we have multi-million dollar land bases. And therein lies the problem, doesn't it? Is that land ever going to be sold? No. Oh, but it might be, Elaine. Well, yes, then you need to visit a lawyer like Mona Brown who puts in a poison pill and has caveats about farmland being flipped by successors. But most of you are working with decent human beings who want to farm long-term and on to the next generation and to the next. In Ontario, we also discovered through our CAFA meetings that the land transfer taxes are different than the more gentle, amiable ones in Manitoba. So you also need to work with your advisors to see what your options are. The other problem that we have is that your mom and dad, who are the same age as me in their 60s or older, are actually embarrassed to tell you that they put everything back into the farm and they don't have a lot of personal investments. And so their liquidity is very challenged by the fact that their retirement funds or funds for how they age in place in the farm are going to have to come from the farm asset side. And it's embarrassing because they thought by the time they were 65 or the time they were 75 that they would be in a certain financial position. So what are you going to do? And are you an entitled successor? Because my friend from um, Myers Norris Penny in Saskatoon says, Elaine, I have seen some farm successors who want all kinds of things which really they are not entitled to. And at the end of my article this month, you'll read some people are born on third base, but they live like they've hit a triple. Think about that. So what can you do? First of all, share the vision. 
share the vision for the farm business, share the finances, have financial transparency. And, you know, some father-in-laws are horrified when I say that. They say, I don't want my daughter-in-law to know what we're worth. Well, newsflash, she's going to find out eventually. And maybe she doesn't need to know the details, but she just needs to know the big picture. Do you have financial wealth outside of the farm or is it all tied up in the farm? Are you paying your bills? Are you viable? Are you profitable? Those are basic questions that are not going to kill you if you share them with your non-farm heirs. Everybody's an adult now. They're not 12 years old anymore. The other thing I want you to share is what's your vision for as you step back without stepping away? And what's the vision for the farm successor or successors? And this is where you young men and women should come to mom and dad with a business plan and show them what enterprise development you would be doing when you have more management capability and more equity in the farm. Now, this whole conflict thing, I'm tired. I don't want to hear any more of these ugly stories about family branches being totally severed and never to be part of the family tree again. And in the Fault Lines books, the story is told of a young woman who sat down in front of her father and uncle and he said, look, you two, you fix whatever this fight is between you by Tuesday because my cousins and I really like each other and we want to stay together in relationship. So whatever's going on for you, you better get this fixed. Now that might sound pretty harsh, but she's brave and she's courageous and she's clear. And being clear is kind. So as you navigate the tension about help my non-farm siblings want farmland, which is one of my most popular blogs, and now this one, how to help your non-farm family siblings uh, get on board with the farm vision, is you have to share, you have to talk, you have to be together. And maybe if you're not even physically together, you're on a facilitated Zoom call with a coach a mediator, someone who's trained in facilitation to keep the meeting safe and respectful so that when you start talking about grandpa's roll top desk or the who's ear, or you start tar- talking about what you want your future relationship to look like with the farm, you can say, I'm just curious, once my brother moves into the main yard, will I still be able to board my horses here? Or mom and dad, are you really sure that you're ready to move out of the main yard? And if you do, What does that mean about gatherings? Where will we gather? And there's all these emotional things about not only the transfer of the farm business, but what is the relationship to the farm place itself going forward? So what are you going to do next? You and your spouse are going to sit down and talk about the timeline for figuring out what you as a couple want. You're going to ask your successors to give you a business plan and a vision of what they want. And you're going to ask your non-farming heirs to come to a family meeting to talk about their expectations about inheritance and that finding fairness for everyone is helping everyone be successful. But that may not mean that you will be getting land because the land may be kept all intact in the corporation or in the personal holdings of the family business. Those are hard to conversations, but they're much better to have with a warm hand and not a cold one. You can do this and please don't be like the families in fault lines that are fragmented and have lost an entire branch of their family tree because they chose money over relationship. I choose relationship. See you next time.